Hello everyone, welcome back to the e Sikshina program of VTU. I am here again uh, to bring you back the whole lecture of uh, water supply and sanitation. So, we are continuing with 18 ARC 43 building services 1 for module 1, where we are still in the water supply relative uh, studies. So, today we are going to talk about how exactly water is distributed because until now we were thinking and uh, you know and trying to uh, uh, figure out as to what exactly were the ways in which water was conveyed onto our whole uh, system along with the quality and quantity of water. So, today we are going to work on distribution, storage and pumping and conveyance of water uh, right from source. So, conveyance of water is basically when we are trying to understand what exactly comes under the process of distribution of water right from storage and pumping. After the water is treated, after the water gets treated in its treatment plan, the water is stored temporarily and supplied to the consumers through a network of pipelines. And these pipelines are called as the distribution pipeline networks. The distribution system is a network of pipelines with appurtenances for transporting water from the purification plant to the consumer step. It includes walls, pumps, reservoirs, pipe fittings, instruments for measurement of pressures, flow leak detectors, etcetera. The cost of distribution costs around 40 to 70 percent of the total cost of the entire scheme. There are various systems or methods of distribution, but for efficient distribution of system what is required to reach every consumer with the required rate of flow. We have to see that there is enough pressure in the pipeline which should force the water to reach at every place. So, depending on the methods of distribution, the distribution system is classified into three different types. One is the gravity system, two the pumping system, three is the dual system or the combined of gravity and pumping system. What is gravity system? As the term says, gravity. Gravity is where it is working in terms of its gravitational force. So, what basically happens here is there is a source of water and from the source of water there is a pump house which uh, clears the water and, uh, and stores the water in its reservoir and through gravity it reaches the consumer's tap. So, the elevation of the source of supply in relation to the area of distribution is kept. So, that adequate water pressure in the pipes at different points is seen and developed. So, if this is the town and if this is the source, we have to make sure there is an adequate slope or gravitational um, level that is kept in mind with respect to conveyance. The water flows in the mains due to gravitational force only as no pumping is required. Therefore, this is one of the most reliable type of distribution system. The next is pumping system. Here the town or the whole consumer end is also at the same uh, um, height or altitude of the source of water. But here what happens is uh, instead of the gravitational force, we actually work with respect to pump houses where all the water is stored and then pumped with respect to the kind of status pressure headlines that we need and then it is served in terms of distribution networks. So, water which is directly pumped into the mains which leads to the consumers is called as the pumping system of network. Double pumping is required first from source to treatment plant, second from pump to water uh, mains or distribution mains. In ca case of a power failure, the whole water distribution system is distrib disturbed. The combined pumping and gravity system works on a combination of both. So, at a source you would have an intake pump, it collects all the water in a reservoir and then it pumped into the reservoir which is a surface reservoir or an overhead or an overhead tank from where due to gravity again it is transcended into the uh, residences or the consumers. So, this is connected to the mains as well as the, the elevated reservoir. When the demand is small, the water is stored in the elevated reservoir, but when the demand increases, the flow in the distribution system comes from both. 
the pumping station as well as the elevated reservoir. So, as in this system water comes from two sources one from reservoir and second from pumping station. So, that is why this is called as a dual system. The system is more reliable and economical also. It meets both low as well as maximum demands and the stored water in the elevated tanks also fulfills the water requirements for sometimes during the breakdown of pumps or for fire fighting. The distribution of server, uh, service reservoirs basically also called as the service reservoirs are the storage reservoirs which store all the treatment plant uh, water after the treatment plant for supplying of water. So, what are the different types of reservoirs? We have surface reservoirs and elevated reservoirs. Depending upon the elevation with respect to the ground, it may be classified as surface when it is at the surface level and if it is elevated, it is considered as an elevated reservoir. A surface reservoir is also called as a ground water reservoir. It is mostly circular or rectangular, it is under the ground and preferred basically under the ground if the size is very large and these reservoirs are constructed on high natural grounds and are usually made of stones, bricks, plain or reinforced cement concrete. So, this is one of the underground reservoir. The elevated storage reservoir is where we combine both gravity as well as pumping system of water distribution and these tanks are either made out of steel or RCC. Now, RCC is nowadays the most preferred choice because the accessories of elevated storage reservoir are inlet and outlet pipes, an overlay flow pipe discharging into a drain, float gauge indicating the depth of water automatic device to stop the pumping when the tank is full, a manhole and a ladder and ventilator for circulation of fresh air. So, this is the elevated storage reservoir, you have a pumping station, pumps in all the water and that is where the water has to return to this level at least. So, this is where the pressure is created before it drops down to the town. <coughs> the various systems of supply of water. One is the continuous system. This is where the water is supplied to the consumers 24 hours a day. Due to continuous circulation, the water always remains fresh. And this system, less diameter of pipes are required and most ideal system of supply. Only disadvantage here is if people are not using it or if they have not closed their taps, there is considerable amount of wastage here. Intermittent system is where the water is supplied during fixed hours in a day. Usual period is around 1 to 5 hours in the morning and about the same period in the evening. Main disadvantage is quantity of water is not sufficient to meet the consumers demands and this is usually adopted in most of the cities and towns of India. The appurtenances which are used in the distribution system, there are various devices which are fixed along the distribution network and these devices are called as appurtenances. The necessity of various appurtenances in the distribution system is basically either to control the rate of flow of water or to release or admit air into the pipeline according to the situation to prevent or detect any kind of leakage or to ultimately improve the efficiency of the distribution system. The following are also some of the fixtures that we use in the distribution system like walls, fire hydrants and water meter. The types of walls. In a water works practice to control the flow of water, to regulate the pressure, to release or to admit air, to prevent the flow of water in opposite direction walls are required. And these walls are put up based on the suit uh, or with respect to the need. In case we need to sluice it, so sluice walls are given to check the water or to reflex the wall, a reflex valve is given, air valves are also provided. There is something called as drain valves or blow off valves and score valve. So, what is a sluice valve? A sluice valve is basically like a gate. So, it is also called as a gate valve or a shut off valve or stop valve. 
This basically is to control the flow of water and the entire distribution system is divided into blocks by providing these valves at appropriate places. So, at every 15 to 20 meter interval these valves are provided at the junction and when each of the sluice valve is closed it shuts off all the water in a pipeline and enables in case uh, any repair is work or any maintenance work is needed. So, that kind of repair happens during that particular Mm, period of time. The flow of water can be controlled by raising the handle. So, there is a handle and there is a spindle there. Once it lowers down the wall, it closes the water pipe and once it in, uh, is uh, you know raised, then the water flows through the whole handle and it can be controlled by opening and closing by rotating the whole handle. That is the section of a gate wall. Gate walls are basically meant to be fully open or fully closed. You cannot keep it midway. So, if it is fully open, the water flows continuously. When it is fully closed, the water stops there. So, there is a packing nut and a packing washer, washer which basically works in the management of the spindle. So, this seal is metal to metal. So, a lot of corrosions can happen in the walls and that might lead to a fail of uh, the system. Next sluice valve or reflex valve, sorry check valve or reflex valve. So, check valve is basically where if there is a water pipe, there is a pivot and that pivot is connected to one end of the pipe and there is a valve there. So, depending on how we would want to clap the whole position of the water, if there is a you know if there is an introduction of another pipe or an oil to be introduced or something like that, then the main line pipe would have this partially open position and the valve would clap it. The check valve or reflex valve are also known as non written valves. A reflex valve is basically an automatic device which allows the water to go in one direction, it is unidirectional and the water moves in the direction of the arrow, the valve swings or rotates around the pivot and it is kept in the opening position due to the pressure. But when the flow of water in this direction stops, the water tries to flow in backward direction, but this valve prevents the passage of water in the reverse direction. So, this valve is invariably placed in water pipes which obtain water directly from pumps. When the pump fails or stops, the water will not run back to the pump and thus pumping equipments will be saved from damaged. That is how it works. So, that is one direction of the water flow. There will be open swing, it checks the valve, and once it closes, the water stops, and then the water will not move in the opposite direction. So, when this closes, the swing closes, the water stops there, and this would stop the whole movement of the water. It is like a hinge which works on the direction of the water also. So, the water does not move back in the reverse direction. <coughs> Next air valve, these are automatic valves and are of two types namely air inlet valves and air relief valves. Air inlet valves open automatically and allow the air to enter into the pipeline. So, that the development of <coughs> any negative pressure can be avoided in the pipelines. The vacuum pressure created in the down stream side in pipeline is due to the sudden closure of all these sluice valves. This situation can also be avoided by using air valves. So, we have either inlet valves or relief valves. Now, what are relief valves? Relief valves are basically when air is accumulated at the summit of all the pipelines. That is where all the pipelines meet and blocks the flow of water. In such cases, the accumulated air has to be removed. So, this is done automatically by means of air relief valves. So, you will have an opening for air, you will have an hinge. So, this flows, there is a ball which flows and once the, this is the connection to the pipe and once the water stops at that position, all the air would flow down, flow up and then exit out of the opening. So, this actually allows all the accumulated air to leave the pipeline. So, there is relief within the pipeline and this is how the process of a closed position and this is an open position and this is when the air actually starts. All right. 
the drain walls or blow up walls. So, these are called as washout walls and they are provided at all the dead ends of the pipeline or any depression in the pipeline because it drains out all the waste water and these are ordinary walls which are operated by hand. The scour walls they are similar to the blow off walls, but they are no ordinary walls they are operated by hand. They are located at the depressions and dead ends to remove the accumulated silt and sand. So, if any pipeline has uh, <coughs> so, so, if there is a pipeline there and at the end of the pipeline if there is a lot of accumulation of sand and silt here the wall is basically put forward closed and then this is removed. Once this is removed then the whole wall becomes free and then the continuation of the water process happens. Water meter. These are devices which are basically installed at the pipelines to measure the quantity of water at a particular point along the readings to actually obtain readings and they help in the working out the quantity of water supplied and the, thus the consumers are charged accordingly. The water meters are usually installed to industries, hotels, big institutions and they prevent the wastage of purified water. Fire hydrants. It is an outlet basically provided in water pipes for tapping the water mainly in case of fire. They are lo located as I mentioned earlier every 100 to 150 meters apart along the roads and also at all the junction roads. They are basically of two types one is a flush hydrant the second is a post hydrant. A flush hydrant is kept in under the ground chambers which is flushed with the foot parts and it is covered by a concrete cover carrying a signboard FH. If you notice any manhole with an FH that is a flush hydrant. So, there is a pi water pipeline which is running continuously there is an outlet there. In case of a fire this is through the outlet that the water comes out from here from the vertical post. So, that is the drain hole and this is what you see at the ground level. Okay. So, there is a vertical post which is usually red in color you can see this in most of the footpaths and even in your apartment spaces and all of that. Post hydrants they are remaining they are the projected vertical posts which are 60 to 90 centimeter above the ground level. They have long stems with screws and nuts to regulate the flow. In case of a fire accident the firefighting squad actually connect their hoses to it and they draw the water and spray it on the fire. Now, how is the water conveyed? How are we bringing it to our distribution networks? The water is conveyed or transported from the source that is from the lakes or springs or rivers from the treatment plants to the community through various conduits. Now, these are either closed conduits or close open conduits. The various types of conduits are gravity conduits which are open channel used to convey raw water from source to water treatment plants and considerable loss of water which happens due to evaporation, percolation etcetera and chance for contamination is also there. The pressure conduits are form of pipes. The size of pipe is determined by cons uh, considering two factors. One is discharge through the pipe that is how much of water quantity is required and second is permissible velocity of flow. Pipes are uh, closed circular conduits. They are selected depending on the forces to be resisted and their durability and there is a lot of stress basically that is being worked out. And based on this stress the pipe is actually categorized and chosen based on the change of direction, based on internal water pressure, based on soil which could be above the pipes, water hammer, the yielding of the soil below the pipes and the stresses of the temperature. The types of pipes depending on the material could be asbestos cement pipes, cast iron pipes, cement concrete pipes copper pipes, galvanized iron or GI pipes, lead pipes, plastic pipes and steel pipes. Asbestos cement pipes are made of mixture of asbestos fibers and cement they are used to convey water at very low pressure and they are restricted. 
but uh, the inside of the surfaces are very smooth. The joining of the pipe is very good and flexible. The pipes are anti corrosive and they are very cheap in cost. They are light in weight and transportation is easy. They are suitable for distribution of pipes of smaller regions. That is why this is very advantageous. But if you look at the disadvantages, they are brittle and therefore, handling it is very difficult. The pipes are not durable, the pipes cannot be laid in exposed places and they can be used only for low pressure regions. <coughs> Cast iron pipes are extensively used, they are available in diameters about 1200 mm or more, inner and outer surfaces are given anti corrosion treatments and there are different categories available depending on the kind of pressure that is required. Advantages of cast iron pipes are the cost is moderate, the pipes are easy to join, the pipes are not subjected to corrosion, the pipes are strong and durable, their service connections are easily made and the life of these kind of pipelines are at least 100 years and above. The disadvantages are breakages of pipes are large, the carrying capacity of these pipes decreases with the increase in the life of pipes, they are not used for pressure which is greater than 0.7 Newton per meter squ mm square, the pipes are heavier and uneconomical. Cement concrete pipes, they are plain, reinforced or pre-stressed. Diameters of 500 mm to 2500 mm are available in the market. The advantages are the inside surface of the pipes can be made smoother, the maintenance cost is lower, the pipes are durable with the life period of 75 years at least, no danger of rusting and these pipes do not collapse or fail under normal traffic. But the disadvantages are equally the same because the, these pipes are heavy, they are cement concrete right and that is it is very difficult to transport. Repair of these pipes are very difficult, they are likely to crack during the transportation process and handling operations and they are affected by acids, alkalis and salts. Copper pipes, they are used in conveyance of hot water in buildings and steam boilers, they are, do not sag, they do not bend due to hot water, they are not liable to corrosion. They can be bent easily and they are very expensive, they are not used for water distribution though. Galvanized iron pipes, they are wisely used for service connections, diameters begin from 6 mm to 75 mm, they are cheap, lightweight, easy to handle, they are easy to join, but they have a very short life that is around 7 to 10 years because they are affected by both acidic as well as alkaline water. GI pipes are very cheap, very light and easy to handle and they are easy to join, but they are affected by acids and alkaline waters. So, the life of the pipe is very short. Lead pipes, they are not adapted for conveying of water because of lead poisoning. Many people have died uh, even in India because of lead poisonings, which has because of the uh, pipelines letting out lead when the water passes through the pipelines. They are easily bent, less number of fittings are required, they react with acidic water, they are used for apparatus required for alum or chlorine dosages, they sag and bend according to the heat that is given to them. Plastic and PVC pipes, there are various types of plastics available, low density Polyethylene pipes are flexible, the high density polyethylene pipes are tough, they are black in color and resistant to most of the chemicals. They are used three times as rigid as PE pipes and they are used in water mains. These are cheap, these are durable, flexible and free from corrosion. They are good electric insulators, they are light in weight and it can be easily mold to any shape. But the coefficient of expansion for plastic is very high, that is one of the biggest disadvantage of plastic pipes, thus difficult to obtain uniform composition. These pipes are less resistant to heat and sometimes of plastic impart taste to the, gives the taste. Steel pipes, they are made from mild steel, MS steel, diameters are greater than 1200 mm and surfaces are generally galvanized. Advantages of steel pipes are number of joinings are less because they are available in longer lengths. These pipes are cheap, they are durable, they are strong to resist any kind of pressure and they are flexible and they can be laid in curves. This transportation is easy because steel is quite light. 
but the maintenance cost of steel is very high because they are likely to be rusted by acidic or alkaline water. So, they require lot of time and again repairs during breakdown and it is not suitable for distribution pipes and they may deform in shape under combined action of any kind of external forces. Now, when you know all the materials, now we know which one to choose as according to the amount of planning that is needed for our city or for our own residences. Now, what you have to understand is there is something called as distribution network for which we basically use all these types of different materials of pipelines. Generally in a practice of any town or any planning system, we have four different systems of distribution which are used. They are dead end system or a tree system of distribution, grid iron system, circular or ring system and radial system. Dead end system is exactly like a tree system, it talks about hierarchy. So, you have a main pipeline, you have branches, you have sub mains and cut off walls, okay, that is the sub main and that is a cut off wall. Next grid iron works on the grid iron basis, that is the main pipe, there, is, there are branches, there is a sub main and those are cut offs are provided at every grid. Radian, you have a reservoir which is a distribution reservoir, you have branches okay. and then you also have your sub main, you have your main pipelines which come and then give uh, given all the water from the sub mains into the reservoirs and from the reservoirs it enters into all your residential units. Or you also have a ring system where there is one main line which connects you to many sub mains and each sub main will again have its own cut off wall and through which you will provide it through your whole network of uh, residences. So, dead end or tree system is suitable for irregularly developed towns or cities. Here the water flows in one direction only into the sub mains and into the branches. The diameter of the pipe decreases as every tree branches. Advantages of this kind of a layout is because the walls required are comparatively lesser and the diameter of the pipes used are smaller. Hence, this system is very cheap and economical and the laying of water pipes is very simple. Disadvantages of this water system is at every dead end of pipe there might be contamination happening. So, during repairs of pipes and walls at any point there might be an entire downstream end which could be deprived of supply. The water available for firefighting will be limited in quantity because it is all transferred into different branches. The grid iron system is where the water from the mains enters into branches at all junctions in both the directions. So, there is water which flows in two directions also into the sub mains of equal diameters. At any point of time, the pressure is balanced and this pressure is happening on both the sides because of interconnected network of pipelines. Advantages of this kind of a system is in the case of repairs. In the case of repairs, a small proportion of distribution area will only be affected and every point receives supply from two directions. So, there is different varieties of pressures that is developed there. Additional water from other branches are available for firefighting and there is free circulation of water hence it is not liable for pollution. Disadvantages more length, more number of walls. So, there is an increased cost of construction, the calculation of sizes of pipes and working on pressures is laborious, complicated as well as difficult. The ring system is formed around a distribution area and the distribution is area is divided into a rectangular block. All the mains are on the periphery, so you see the mains which are on the periphery. Supply to the inner pipes is from the mains along the boundary, it has the same advantages as the grid iron system. Your smaller diameter pipes can be put up, the advantages and disadvantages are same as the grid iron system. The radial system is where the water is taken from all the mains pumped into the distribution reservoirs which are situated at center of each of the different zones and water is supplied radially 
through the, all the pipes which are laid radially. And this is basically one of the distribution system. So, that is the catchment where it is reserved. All the raw water mains come to the water treatment plan through, through the production meter, through the plant of production, it is again brought forward into your distribution bars. So, from the there you would have a district meter and this district meter would be connected to the bulk water meter and this bulk water is basically given to industries. So, the bulk water customer is an industrialist there. So, there will be trunk mains which are separately connected to the bulk water meter and then there would be a reservoir which is basically going to collect and store all the water that is needed for your city or a town and from where there would be a zone meter and this zone meter would be connected to your trunk mains from where to each of your districts is your water transferred. So, the each of your district would be again connected through either of the uh, either of the systems that is laid according to your city and its uh, uh, context. So, based on its context when all these either of the four factors are connected, you would see that there is a metered area here, there is another metered area here with its own individual you know domestic meters with its domestic lines and distribution mains. So, there would be one distribution main, one domestic line, one domestic meter. Likewise, each one would be connected if it is a smaller house, if it is a larger uh, residence or larger consumer, then larger meters are also provided. And this is how the whole distribution system is connected all through the town. With this, we are done with conveyance and distribution of uh, the water supply. Thank you so much. Uh, with the distribution system explained, I would also like to add on a few more uh, alternative resources for you here where we are talking about the various uh, conveyances systems along with uh, how exactly uh, laying of pipes happens in terms of conveyances and what are the ways in which conveyances are distributed through the whole uh, right from the catchment to the whole uh, town or a settlement is seen further. If you look at how we have uh, always uh, developed a reservoir where we store all the water and from there the water basically starts uh, you know getting collected and then uh, we see the conduits being put up. This is for conveyances where the conduits are being installed and then we see a lot of uh, manual as well as mechanical upliftment and then we start laying the pipes for it. After the pipes are laid, in case we are trying to work on uh, um, you know wells or even if we are trying to talk in terms of storage uh, reservoirs, then we also have these concrete rings which are basically going to uh, store all our waters. And these concrete rings are also you know the places which with which we get a whole casing a clean casing where water can be stored and then it could be utilized. And then uh, there are various ways in which we see the conveyances one of the way is open canal system and open canal system is exactly uh, the opposite of a closed conduit system. An open canal system is mostly rectangular like a box like and there could be all these uh, U or V channels which are you know taking the water forward from their sources and then um, how as, uh, as to how exactly it is laid as according to the availability of the um, you know gradient of the site. And then uh, these are aqueducts or uh, you know possibly the sewers where the water is actually laid out uh, at the underground and then from where it could be layers of you know water and then um, there could be one storage uh, ring and from where this water is carried from the source until the usage. And these are the tunnels, okay. tunnels are where the water is carried uh, all along the walls and there could be you know the two different methods of uh, conveyances could also come in here, the partially 
uh, you know s sub partially combined system or a combined system or even a system where it is all individual to itself. So, totally depending on the availability the tunnels are also selected and sorted while conveying the uh, source of water. Then we also have flumes, now flumes are uh, you know uh, as you all know this, are, this is one more conventional method where we basically convey the water right besides the water body and uh, the pipes are laid al all alongside. So, you know the flow of water is also all according to the gradient there. So, with it the conveyance of water also has a lot of other considerations which we have to see and work on in terms of efficiency. One is working pressure. When we actually talk about the working pressure, the actual maximum pressure which is inclusive of the abnormal conditions such as the water hammer to which the wipe will be subjected during its operation. So, the working pressure is one of the major consideration after which the design pressure. Here the maximum pressure for which the design and the pipe has been designed has to be considered which is working pressure times the factor of safety. So, factor of safety is also calculated and we also have to see as to how much of working pressure is anticipated in terms of our design. Test pressure is the maximum pressure where the pipe can withstand without any kind of leakages when tested for any kind of hydrostatic pressure. And uh, conveyances of water basically happens through pipes as we all know there are various pipes that are available in the market and uh, some of these pipes could be the concrete pipes, the PVC pipes or even you know hardcore uh, GI pipes. So, conveyance of waters are basically calculated in terms of the working pressure and factor of safety. And the selection of the material as to what exactly could be the priority for the selection is basically based on the carrying capacity of the pipes, the durability and the life of the pipe and the type of water which is to be conveyed and its corrosive effect on the pipe material. Any fund that has come up for the whole laying and uh, distribution of conveyance, the maintenance cost, the repair. The pipe material which would give the smallest annual cost or capital cost is usually selected because it is mostly economical. And out of all the types mentioned plastic or PVC and asbestos cement pipes or even wooden pipes are not generally used for conveyance of water. They are used only in residential drainages or water connections within an individual house. Otherwise, we basically use PVCs or cement concrete or even GI pipes. So, how does a water supply line get laid? Pipes are generally laid below the ground level, but sometimes when they pass in an open area they are laid over the ground. So, we have to be very considerate of the gradient in terms of planning and aligning it. So, this is the following way in which it is whole all of it is planned. First of all a detailed map of all the roads streets are prepared. Second, on this map the proposed pipeline with all its leng lengths and sizes are marked. The position of an existing pipeline, the curb lines, the sewer lines are also marked. In addition to this position of walls and other pipe specials like stand posts are also marked so that the time of laying there should be no difficulty in this kind of a connection. After the general planning the central line of the pipeline is transferred on the ground from the detailed plan. The center line is mapped by means of stalks which are driven at 30 meters interval on a straight line. On the curves the stalks are driven at 7 to 15 meters spacing. If the road or streets have a lot of curves the distance of the center of the pipe from curb will be also marked. When the center line has marked on the ground the excavation for the trenches will be started. The width of the trench should be at least 30 centimeter to 40 centimeter more than the external diameter of the pipe and also at every joint the depth of the excavation which is around 15 to 20 centimeter more or for 1 meter length for easy joining of the pipes. The pipelines should be laid more than 90 centimeter below the ground so that the pipe may be may not break due to the impact of heavy traffic which is going to move upon the uh, ground. 
After the excavation of trenches, the pipes are also lowered and the pipe laying should start from lower level and proceed towards higher level with the socket end towards the higher end. The joining of pipes should be done along with the laying of pipes. So, after laying the pipes in positions, the pipes are tested for water leakage as well as pressure. When the pipeline is tested, the back fillings of all the excavated material is done and the soil which was excavated is filled back into the trenches all around the pipes and it should be well rammed. All the surplus soil is disposed of and the site should be cleaned. So, this is the process which is shown in images. The, uh, first digging, then you start uh, you know actually seeing as to how much of the depth is needed along with the width of the uh, pipelines. So, totally depending on the um, you know width of the pipeline, we first lay the pipes, even the joineries are laid, then we check for pressure. Once it is all done, once pressure is checked, then we fill back the trenches and with which the whole laying of pipelines are done. And with this, we end this whole session of conveyance of water too. Thank you so much.